Ming Lava, welcome to MITV special talk show Perspectives. For this program, we have invited Honorable Guest Speaker Wu Eichan, who is Councillor of Myanmar Press Council and Chairman of Myanmar E-Commerce Association and also Deputy Chairman of uh, Myanmar Digital Economy Association of UMFCCI. Ming Lava, yeah, thank you very much for your time. And uh, this time we are going to discuss about how Myanmar is losing out big time. So uh, what type of once in a lifetime opportunities are uh, as we are having now? Okay, right now what is happening is, you know, uh, once in a millennium opportunity where companies are shifting out of China, especially companies that focus on the labor intensive manufacturing. So they are shifting out of China, and they are shifting to the regional countries, and especially around Southeast Asia, in and around Southeast Asia. So that, that is the opportunity. As the big companies shift out of China, it represents very good FTI opportunities for the receiving countries. So why they are shifting? Uh, because of labor, labor force costing? Yeah, because the, the right now, as the China is, you know, now the world's second uh, biggest economy, right? And the labor cost uh, per hour is around, manufacturing labor cost per hour is around nearly getting near to $8.50, $8.50. Whereas uh, labor cost per hour around this uh, Pacific, Asia Pacific Rim countries, uh, if you talk about India, Bangladesh, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, Indonesia, they are only like three, uh, they are only like three dollars per hour. So they are labor hourly rates are one third of China right now. Mm -hmm. So if your company is very labor intensive manufacturing company, it makes sense to move out of China in the long term to one of these countries. Mm -hmm. So that's the a major reason. Mm -hmm. The other uh, supplementary reasons might be, you know, because of the continuing chip war, high-tech war between the uh, China and the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of, you know, the, the, the U.S., they, they want to impose tariffs, they impose duties on a lot of uh, uh, tech-related products from China. So, you know, having a manufacturing base in China, especially if you're exporting a lot to the U.S., sometimes is you are subject to a political risk. That's the second one. And the last one is, you know, oh, oh, because of the trade imbalance between the two countries, they may also subject to, you know, tariffs and import taxes and rent. Mm -hmm. So uh, now uh, China is thriving. That's why the, uh, the business are also leaving to other uh, prospective um, market places. So how about some examples? Okay, uh, if you look at it, well, China essentially just now, uh, just now, as I mentioned, especially the labor costs are going up. Mm. So if you look at the Japanese companies, right, uh, before 2020, there are nearly 14,000 companies. Now it's only 12,700 companies left mm. in China. This is for Japanese companies. A good example would be Sony, Sony cameras. They are shifted from China to Thailand. Uh, shift, they have shifted their production. Mm. Yeah, that's one of the examples. And for example, Samsung has reduced about two-thirds of their workforce in China. Mm -hmm. Korea Samsung, yeah, over the seven, eight years period, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the last example would be the Dell computers. Uh, they have stated publicly that they're not buying any more chips from China from 2024 onwards. Mm -hmm. So they are also based on political agendas? So well, sometimes they want to get out of their political risk, mm -hmm. yeah, especially if you're talking about just now Dell. Mm -hmm. So oh, where do these big companies go? For example, how do these countries benefit? Okay, typically these countries that get out, get out of China, especially because of the high labor cost, mm -hmm. they went to the uh, RCEP country, Regional uh, Comprehensive Economic Partnership countries. Mm -hmm. uh, these are like all the Pacific rims of the ASEAN, uh, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, uh, Cambodia perhaps, and plus the, the other two, India and Bangladesh. So that's where these companies went. For example, like you know, Thai, the Taiwan companies, they, they produce the uh, uh, iPhones and all the assemble the iPhone, Foxconn and Pe Pegatron and all these things. They are moving to India. They are buying India factories, right? So for example, right now, 
one in 25 iPhones in the whole world is produced by India. From 2025 onwards, India's share of iPhone production will be one in four. Mm -hmm. one, in, one out of every four phones, iPhones will be produced by India, mm -hmm. made in India iPhones. Yeah, so that, that's how, that's how, that's how you know, these, these countries are benefiting you know, because of the shift from China, because these factories are originally in China. Now they are, they are moved in India. And like Taiwan University, the big university, they are training Indian workers in electronics so that they'll be ready for this high-end high electronics uh, production, such as iPhone. And uh, another example, Google shifting their smartphone operations from China to uh, Vietnam. Yeah, so the Vietnam is benefiting. Malaysia is already making about 10% of the world chips production. Yeah, and then the, uh, uh, for example, Qualcomm. Qualcomm is a chip designer from U.S. They are moving their R&D center, research and development center from China to Vietnam. Yeah, and the other uh, example, Vietnam is also courting, courting, attract, trying to get Intel to invest $3.3 billion chip factory in Vietnam itself. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the uh, Japanese, another Japanese food manufacturing company, Glyco, they are opening the world biggest uh, snack, snack factory in Indonesia to be supplied to the whole world. We have shifted from China also. Yeah, and these are, these are the few examples that, you know, companies have shifted and they have benefited all these RCEP countries plus India and Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. So how about us? <laughs> yeah, obviously Myanmar is nowhere to be see in the list of the beneficiary. That's no good. Yeah, the only FTIs that we are currently having is uh, from the neighboring countries like Thailand leading the way. Yeah, at the same time, that is also not very helpful because it's not promoting this Made in Myanmar brand, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a lot of people, so-called the FTI is coming to Myanmar is to buy the raw materials from Myanmar and they repackage their, in their own country and sell it to across the world under their own brand, mm -hmm. right? So a Myanmar brand is not coming up at all mm -hmm. in the Made in Myanmar brand or Myanmar produce a Myanmar brand. This brand is not coming up in our FDI. Mm -hmm. That's why, you see, we, we, we are, in terms of beans and pulses, we are top three producers in the world. Mm -hmm. But in overseas supermarket, we never see any beans and pulses that are made in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. right? Other countries buy our things in bar and they repackage. Mm -hmm. yeah, same with rice. Rice, we are top, top five or top ten producers of rice in the world. But wherever you go overseas, you never see made in Myanmar rice. Yeah. So there is a... You know, there's a so made in Myanmar brand is not being uh, pushed up. You know, for it, uh, even with uh, some of the FDI from neighbors coming in. Mm -hmm. So what is the solution there? Well, the solution is obviously this time of, uh, this, this round of once in a millennium opportunity. I don't think we are in a position to benefit. Grab. <laughs> we are in a position to grab at all anymore. Yeah, so... Oh, the, the solution for us is, you know, we have to persevere, we need to be resilient, and we need to put in hard work. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we need to work better than other neighboring countries. We need to work better than people from Bangladesh or people from China. We need to work harder. We need to be more resilient. We need to be more, you know, uh, pers uh, we need to have more perseverance, right? If not, we'll be always far behind, far behind. You know, but think about it, Vietnam, really had it worse during the Vietnam War, around the 1970s. They are really, really poor. Now Vietnam is even producing electric cars. and They are having all the fallout from, you know, companies leaving China. Most of them are going to Vietnam, right? And Vietnam was under sanction during the Vietnam War, right? And they are super, very, very poor. No economy, the economy is really zero at that time, right? Now they are probably the fastest growing in Southeast Asia. Yeah, so, so, so what I'm trying to say, you know, you can, if you have the right policy and the right mindset and the right type of hard work, we can also get somewhere. But currently, we are not having that type of mindset. We are attacking Myanmar people, attacking Myanmar people, Myanmar people attacking Myanmar companies, Myanmar people just trying and, you know, disparaging, talking bad about Myanmar government, Myanmar as a country. So we will never have a good Myanmar brand. Because, you know, people are, you know, instead of talking good things about Myanmar, overseas especially, right, they are saying all the bad things about Myanmar people, Myanmar government, Myanmar companies, how do we, how we can grow out of that, 
right? And plus, all the, especially on the, uh, while we are having all this type of fight among ourselves in fighting, all our neighbors are smiling because we, we, we are getting poorer while they are getting richer, right? So this has to stop. Right? All these cyber attack and, you know, all these social punishment and all these attacking Myanmar company, it has to stop. If not, we'll forever be poor. And at the same time, the government has to make sure that this type of attacks never happen again. Because it's very because of that, right, we can miss out this once in a lifetime opportunity because of Myanmar people attacking Myanmar companies and, and destroying Myanmar itself. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Shia. Thank you very much for your insightful discussion. So we have to think seriously how Myanmar is losing out big time. You have been watching MITV special talk show, Perspectives. Thanks for joining us.